These are the conventional wisdom formulas for both the volume and the surface calculations of spheres. Despite the numerous criticisms we've made of using these formulas for calculations in negative dimensions, we at Dimensionology are ultimately just seeking coexistence. We do not wish to supplant the conventional wisdom, but merely point out that there can be more than one path to understanding the measurement of the volume and the surface of spheres in negative dimensions. The conventional wisdom and dimensionology agree completely on the calculations for the volume and the surface of spheres in positive dimensions. The disagreement begins with the surface of a point, whether there even is one or what its value is. The idea of the surface of a point is where we all get to decide for ourselves about whether the concept of dimensional value in specific and dimensionology in general are appropriate. For those who may have missed it, a complete explanation of dimensional value can be found in episode 3. So, do we rigidly follow the arithmetic sequence for dimensional value where after 1 comes 0, or do we recognize that there can be a whole series of numbers that are less than 1 but greater than 0 using an arithmetic geometric sequence? This may sound like a silly question since most of us understand the concept of fractions and decimals, but that really is the decision that needs to be made prior to proceeding to calculating the volume or the surface of spheres in negative dimensions according to dimensionology. Let me give you an analogy for this problem by simply trying to measure the diameter of a dime with a ruler. If we rigidly adhere to the arithmetic sequence, the ruler will only have 12 inches marked on it. So, in measuring the diameter of a dime, we find that it's smaller than 12 inches, smaller than 11 inches, smaller than 10 inches, etc., all the way down to it's smaller than 1 inch and therefore 0 inches. This makes absolutely no sense since we can clearly see that the dime has a diameter. So, the diameter of a dime, when adhering strictly to an arithmetic sequence, becomes 0 inches plus something else denoted with an asterisk, where the asterisk is defined as a number greater than 0 but less than 1. Alternately, if we don't adhere rigidly to the arithmetic sequence, we can understand that 0 isn't the only number that can follow 1. It can also be followed by 1 half, and then 1 quarter, and then 1 eighth, etc., all the way to infinity, and this is an arithmetic geometric sequence. This is the way we typically use a ruler, and this sequence produces the result that a dime has a diameter of about 3 quarters of an inch. When it comes to using the conventional wisdom for calculations of the volume or the surface of spheres in negative dimensions, there is strict adherence to the arithmetic sequence when assigning a value to dimensions denoted as n in the gamma function calculations as opposed to using the dimensional value. However, just switching to the dimensional value alone does not fix the problem with the gamma function in negative dimensions, because in episode 2 we showed that there are no factorials in the negative dimensions to support either the algebra for positive dimensions or the gamma function. The results from using the conventional wisdom with the gamma function leave the set of non-zero real positive numbers and end up as undefined for zero in the negative integers and complex numbers for everything else. So we end up with something that looks like this for the calculations in negative dimensions. Dimensionology, on the other hand, uses the arithmetic geometric sequence for the dimensional value in its calculations for negative dimensions, and all results remain within the set of non-zero real positive numbers. The main difference being that all the recurrences and ratio relationships established in the positive dimensions continue into the negative dimensions when using the dimensionology results and cease with the conventional wisdom results. I plays a very prominent role in dimensionology, although its application is different than in complex numbers. The imaginary number i is defined as the square root of negative 1, and complex numbers are comprised of two parts, the real part and the imaginary part. Dimensionology uses i in such a manner that even referring to i as an imaginary number may actually be a misnomer. In episode 3, we showed that dimensions 1 and 2 are transitional in nature, in that we can use all four methods of calculations for both the surface and the volume of spheres. In positive dimensions, both the conventional wisdom and the algebra for positive dimensions calculations match, where the other two methods do not. In negative dimensions, both the imaginary numbers and the algebra for negative dimensions match, while the other two methods do not. The algebra for positive dimensions fails in negative dimensions because there are no factorials to support the equations, as discussed in episode 2. However, the conventional wisdom continues its calculations and simply veers off into a completely different set of numbers.
A remarkable relationship exists between the algebra for negative dimensions and imaginary numbers methods in that the base 2 component is in the denominator for the algebra calculations but switches to the numerator for the imaginary numbers calculation. From a dimensionology perspective then, all that separates an imaginary number from a real number in our exponent calculation is a simple act of division. It would seem then that imaginary numbers may be the better method for the calculation of the volume and the surface of spheres in negative dimensions since all the components remain in the numerator and I only appears in the exponent calculation. In episode 14 we had shown that imaginary numbers can only be used to calculate six of the eight common transitional measurements correcting an apparent error from episode 5 where we had stated they could also be used for the surface calculations in dimensions 3 and 4. Further investigation, however, shows us that our original statement was in fact correct and that all four of our methods can now be used for all eight of our transitional measurements. That's very significant for us because we can look at these eight transitional calculations as a sort of dimensional splice between the positive and negative dimensions. The conventional wisdom in the algebra for positive dimensions are on one side of the splice, and the imaginary numbers in algebra for negative dimensions are on the other side. This creates an interesting situation where we know that if we extrapolate the positive dimension methods into negative dimensions, they simply don't work. But if we extrapolate the negative dimension methods into positive dimensions, each of the volume calculations have a ratio relationship with the quotient between the positive dimension methods and the negative dimension methods. And there is a one-to-one -one surface volume ratio relationship between the quotient of the surfaces in dimension n plus 2 and the quotient for the volume of dimension n. So let's have a look at how this works. Even though most of the imaginary numbers calculations for the volume in positive dimensions are incorrect, they all still maintain a ratio relationship with the correct volume calculation. If we start with the volume in dimension 3 and divide it by the imaginary numbers volume calculation, the two numbers will always have a ratio relationship of 1.3333. And if we divide the imaginary numbers volume calculation by the correct volume calculation, these two calculations will always have a ratio relationship of 0.75 in dimension 3. If we move on to the volume in dimension 4 and divide it by the imaginary numbers volume calculation, these two numbers will always have a ratio relationship of 2. And if we divide the imaginary numbers volume calculation by the correct volume calculation, these two calculations will always have a ratio relationship of 0.5 in dimension 4. In addition, the dimensional quotients for any n plus 2 surface calculation will always be equal to the dimensional quotients of any n volume calculation as shown here. This suggests then that the imaginary numbers and the algebra for negative dimensions methods are the more universal for the calculations of the volumes and the surfaces of spheres and that the imaginary numbers method itself may actually be the preferred method since all the components remain in the numerator. This is Jeff Sabo for Dimensionology. Up next, halving and doubling.